Good morning. Welcome to a sneak preview of our Dentsu Creativity Report. We've called it Creativity at the Crossroads because there's so much soul searching going on in our findings with today's CMOs. Now, many of you have asked, what exactly is horizontal creativity? I've seen a lot of horizontal creatives, and I expect to see more of them as the week goes on. But what is horizontal creativity? At its simplest, horizontal creativity is creativity that will not stay in its box. It's creativity that gets in everywhere, from media to CXM to commerce, and makes them more innovative, more impactful, and more effective. And you'll see lots more of that as the week goes on as well. So let's look at the eight key themes from our CMOs around the world. The first will come as a huge surprise to everyone. Today's clients want it all, all of the time. It's about the power of plus. And the reason they want it all is because modern marketing is increasingly complex. 76% of our clients agree it's getting complicated out there, which is why they need it all. They need brand and performance, global and local. The ease, the simplicity of a single agency partner and the diverse expertise that comes from many voices around the table. So it makes the relationships we have more important than ever. It's particularly interesting when we think about brand and performance. Here's an interesting stat. 77% of CMOs agree that we focus too much on performance and we need to double down on brand. 76% agree that we focus too much on brand and we need to double down on performance, so go figure. But it's okay, we're on the Riviera, the home of Scott Fitzgerald, and he famously said that if you can hold two opposing ideas in your head and retain the ability to function, that is the sign of a first-rate intelligence. So well done, CMOs. A big theme that emerged this year was a real concern among CMOs about what their media budgets are funding. And again, we see two different perspectives here. 62% worry about the impact of their activities on the climate, and on people around the world, 59% about the impact of social media on young people and their mental health. On the flip side, we see 81% agreeing that bands can make a real difference in the world by elevating diverse voices with their platform. And of course, it is officially illegal at Cannes this year not to talk about artificial intelligence. 83% of CMOs agree that AI will take away mundane tasks. It will automate, it will make things efficient, it will free up time for creativity. And 84% that it will never replace the human imagination. I love this statistic on the left. 77% agree that AI will never make content that moves us. Can a robot make us cry? Can a robot make us laugh? Can it make us think? I think that's an incredibly interesting challenge. And another really interesting provocation here, 81% of CMOs believe that customers will pay a premium for human-created content. So just as handmade commands a premium in the physical world, handmade content may start to command a premium. But amidst all the things that clients are worrying about, the planet, artificial intelligence, customer still comes first, second, and third. When we ask our clients what they're worried about now and in 2030, it is owning the audience relationship in a world of disintermediation. It's responding to changing consumer behaviors, and it's representing more diverse audiences with real nuance and understanding. So amidst all the other problems, it is still all about the customer. So moving on to that horizontal creativity theme. Our clients increasingly agree that brands are built through experiences. 87% agree brands are built 
through experiences, and so they're investing in the kind of technologies that are fit for purpose, that create experiences that genuinely build brands and move hearts. And they also agree that technologies such as live streaming, shoppable commerce, are blurring the boundaries between content and commerce as never before. Which leads to our next theme, entertainment. We absolutely see CMOs agreeing that brands have got to create their own entertainment platforms. They've got to entertain, not to engage, not just because it's a nice thing to do, but because it is the only way to own your customer. Coming back to the number one concern they have, building your own platforms, building your own audiences. And it's also interesting to note that if we just think about advertising, our bread and butter, CMOs agree that advertising is just not entertaining enough anymore. We're not making people laugh. We're not making people smile. So something to think about as we wander the corset and look at the work that's winning. Another theme, of course, we see every year at Cannes is purpose. And what I found actually pretty encouraging about this year's report was we see the end of purpose washing. 69% of CMOs are saying that we think too much about purpose. We've forgotten how to sell as an industry. Now, that sounds a little bit scary, a little bit depressing, but actually it's because they're embedding purpose so tightly in their core business. They're saying that their businesses will make a fundamental pivot in response to climate change, that it's no longer possible to separate growth and good. So what we're seeing an end to is purpose as a side project or a hobby or a nice to have. We're seeing it absolutely central and core to our clients' businesses, as we heard earlier on from the likes of GM and Microsoft. So those are our key themes. My good friend Ida is going to unpack those with some wonderful client and Dentsy people in just a moment. But if I sum it up, there are some new sweet spots emerging for brands and businesses at the intersection of brand, experience, and culture. And it's all about our ability to connect. Brands with that new sense of urgency about fundamentally connecting growth and good. Experiences that use gaming and virtual technologies to connect the online and the offline space entertainment platforms that connect content and commerce as never before. All of those things helping us build connected brands for a connected world. And at the intersection of those themes, you see our priorities as Density Creative, the ability to build brands that change society and make a difference through experiences and through action. Brands that create culture and own their own audiences and brands that invent new possibilities at the intersection of entertainment and experience, which is what we mean and what we call modern creativity. Thank you all so much. I'm going to hand to my good friend Ida and her panel. Thanks, Pat. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dentsy Beach House. Bienvenue. I hope you're having a great can. Um, I'm hoping we don't take off today, but if we do, it will be an experience, if nothing else. So I'm going to welcome our wonderful panelists to the stage. Oh, I'll go that side. OK, merci. So first up, we've got Miss Magali Mayanda, the CMO of Air France. Woo -hoo. Come on up, Miss Magali. Thank you for getting us here on time. There were no issues with Air France. Um, and second up, we've got Rob Van Griefsen from the Global Digital Director at Heineken. Come on up, Rob. And then last but not least, um, Paolo Fcaccia, the CEO of Dentsu Creative in the Americas. You want to come on in here? Yes. Sure. Have you got a mic? Oh, on that side. Okay. Oh, you're going to go there. No, no, I'll call close to you. Yes. 
Okay, so we heard a lot of um, great themes from Pat, and I thought we'd use those as the food for thought for our discussion today. Yep. Mike's working? It is. Yes. yes. They're used to me shouting, so Testing. I'm not going to sound any different up here, but good that we've got amplification. Okay, so the first theme I wanted to pick up on was the one that Pat's called um, uh, the power of plus. I think that our industry and our efforts are getting even more complicated. CMOs, from what we could see, are after everything. They quite rightly demand everything, from performance to brand, global to local, and so on. And I think that demands um, a really close partnership with the agency. We're navigating a lot together um, and collaborating. So I would love to hear from each of you what you look for in your agency partner, um, but specifically one thing that you love and one thing that you hate. To de desqua, you know. <laughs> so um, I would love to start with you, Miss Magali, if that's okay. Hi, uh, good, uh, good morning. Um, hard question, actually. Uh, honestly, it's just, um, I don't know. To be fully honest, I don't know. Uh, I know... Uh, you know, we can say, uh, let's not be always positive, but I think, uh, you know, in a client relationship, you always have these ups and downs, and that's part of a relationship, you know, uh, that's how you build a team. So for me, it's not really about what doesn't work, it's your ability to fix it, yes. to make it happen. And I think um, I'm working with, I think, yeah, a lot of you know her, but uh, Cécile from Densu uh, whoop, whoop. Creative Paris. <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, um, one of the things that works is just, um, you know, it's a... Uh, how do you keep on challenging a brand like Flying Blue, which is a loyalty program of our friends KLM? How do you ensure that you're not only answering to briefing, but you, you go the extra mile for it? You know, and uh, I like to be challenged. And I'm passionate about my job, and I do think that you know, we can reinvent what loyalty can be, as simple as that. And I found someone who is crazier than me. And when I say, let's jump, and she replies, it's not high enough, I'm happy. That's oh, great. Yeah. So that's great. Oh, look how look how happy you've made Miss Cecile. <laughs> great, Rob. Yeah, I, th I I think you're right that it's it's super challenging nowadays. I think uh, uh, a brand like Heineken wants to be part of culture, maybe impacting culture, but also needs to see conversion into sales. Yeah. Each day, every day, uh, we want uh, we want to. Uh, if you, if you do that commerce part, yeah, it's not only about the short term breeding demand, but it's for, uh, for uh, especially for a brand like Heineken, also uh, about uh, long term brand building. Yeah. So I think the relationship between uh, a so called client and its agency network is quite an intense. Uh, the complexity, but also the quantity of stuff that needs to be That's delivered right. and the speed uh, of it is uh, is quite daunting. So I think um, what I really like in, uh, in a partnership is that people um, keep us honest. Because Very as a nice. company, especially a 150 plus year old company, we can be a bit, um, yeah, we have tunnel vision. We believe our own truth. We talk to our internal stakeholders sometimes more than our external stakeholders like consumers and customers. So fresh perspectives that keep us honest is uh, what, I, uh, what I really uh, like. Anything you hate? Yeah, I, 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 I was about to say I wouldn't be Dutch with my Calvinistic trait to, uh, to not... Brilliant, uh, we love it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, what, uh, what I think, uh, 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 what sometimes is uh, uh, hard is if agencies, for all the right reasons, have fallen in love with their ideas or f uh, with a certain proposal or a plan and that, I don't know, if, if they're not able to be agile and flexible and also to, to embrace the feedback that we give with positive intent, then sometimes the, um, yeah, then the relationship gets a bit prickly. Yeah, I think they're all really fair. I love that you like being pushed. I love that you, lo that you really appreciate honesty and brutal honesty yep. in pursuit of making the work better. So I think they're, they're really sage words from both of you. I would love to flip the mirror Oh, wow. And get My Paolo, pa yeah. Paolo talking from the <laughs> other side of the table. So, Paolo, what do yeah. you think makes for a great agency-client relationship? And what's the one thing that you love and the one thing that you hate? That's a very either question. <laughs> yes. Um, it is a, the way that I put it is it's a relationship business. It's a talent business. 
as we, we have relationships, and I call agency client a marriage, we have to be in the, the mindset of building something together, right? And I think that we need to be able to assess risk together, create trust together, and then at some point decide how we're going to move forward together, right? Um, what I love is when we create that safe space yeah. that we can do together things that we cannot even imagine on the first day that we met. This is what I love the most. It's that inspiration that we have. It's when we go to you know, meetings together and, and we're part of the same team, right? I love to always think that it is one team. Everyone says that, but truly one team where the strategy is there, the talent is there, and there is accountability for everyone. So keeping you, you know, honest or making sure that we fix the problems, those things is about accountability. This is what I love. What I don't love, what I hate, I would say hate is a strong word. I don't like when, when we have that in and out effect as an agency, mm. when we're not part of the day to day, when we need to come in to fix something, but we don't have the context. It's really unfair to the process. It's unfair to everyone's time actually, right? Because what we need to do in order to build a brand, to have an impact, is to be part of your team, making sure that we're working together, right? Um, and there's no other way, it's a lottery ticket if you think that with a couple of meetings we can go ahead and you know, resolve an issue. So it is a relationship business, I'll go back there. It's a talent business and it's a marriage that needs to be worked every day. Yeah. It's a marriage that needs to be worked every yeah. day. I agree. I'm not married, but I think it's a marriage. Yes. Uh, and, and maybe yeah. if, uh, just one brief comment on that. I, I, we, we stole with pride a slide that I think Sam and Kate uh, there in the back made a, a couple of years ago where they said Dentsu is all about radical collaboration. collaboration. Yeah. And I think in, uh, in radical collaboration, it's, it's a two-way street. So That's you, right. uh, to your point, uh, yep. uh, if we don't provide the input and the context, then we can never uh, demand all our agencies to thrive. But I also think it's a lot about radical collaboration uh, in different agencies or different sp uh, specialties that you uh, need from an event production to digital development. Um, and also, as a global brand, it's also about radical collaboration between a global head markets. office and its markets. That's right. So that radical collaboration, y you will get transactional work if you see it as a transaction relationship. That's right. If it's a more meaningful relationship, you will get more meaningful work. That's the yeah. result of, Magali, you were going to say something. No, no, I, I fully agree with you. And this is also what Pat was saying earlier. You know, our job, if the agency job has become more complex from a client perspective, yeah. it's also more complex. Yeah. It's not only about, you know, building a website, creating an email, uh, you, know, the, you know, coming up with new life cycle <laughs> campaigns or things like that. It's the entire ecosystem that That's we are right. looking at. It's from an experience perspective. So at least what we are looking from from an agency perspective is to be able to give a call on a Monday and say, actually, you know, I want to review my entire technical stack. Can you support? Or give a call on a Wednesday morning and say, um, you know, I, I can't figure it out with another agency from a logo perspective, and we are, you know, struggling with uh, the brand positioning. Can you support? Or come with a, another request on a Friday morning saying, you know what, we're going to win the World Football Cup on Monday. Can you come with a campaign on uh, Monday at 11 o'clock? And that's, by the way, our real example on how we work with uh, Cecile and then Sue Creative on all this, you know, this entire scope of things that we are asking yeah. from the agency. But the dialogue part is absolutely key. That's great. That's great. I'm going to move on to another question, if you're ready. Okay, so um, another one of the themes that Pat's outlined was funding fear, with 62% of CMOs saying they were worried about the impact of where they spent their dollars on the planet and on society. And there was a real duality to that, because there were others that weren't worried. You know, there was an almost even split. But I would love to understand from you how you make sure that your marketing dollars are spent in a way that you feel is, is driving positive impact um, around you. Um, who wants to go first, Magali, Rob? And I will Shall I go first? Yeah. yeah, go for it, Rob. Uh, yeah, I, I think... Um, Maybe to a certain degree we're a bit lucky as an alcohol brand to already be quite restricted in what we can and yeah. can't do. And in all those years we've learned to, to, to also make sure that what we do is in a, a responsible way and in a, and in a brand safe way. 
And, and at the same time, I also think as a Heineken brand, uh, 150 years old, we were quite lucky that we didn't have to do soul searching for a purpose because it was there from the start. Yeah. So the Heineken brand is all, all about uh, connecting beyond barriers. And, 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 and our motto is that life tastes better with an open mind. So Love diversity, so open-mindedness, uh, progress is all uh, what we're all about. So I think in, in the content, in media, in partnerships with, uh, with bars, with big events, we always will focus on that. Uh, and, and if we believe that the diversification of our media platforms is, is a way to do it, then, uh, uh, then we won't stop there. That's great. I think we always talk about when you know what you believe, you know how to behave. So going back in your history, you know, really helps define how you act now. It's, it's awesome. And it's a, great, it's a great platform that you've got as well. Um, Miss Magali, do you want to talk to this a little? Uh, I was not sure, but the question was related to the budget part or to the... <laughs> you can go anywhere Both. there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, I mean, yeah, it's always... We, we want it all, you know. Uh, we want a huge impact with little budget because also I think from an airline perspective and industry perspective, we are going through, we went through tough times. We are yeah. not fully yeah. out of it, even if the, I may mean, say that uh, the flights are full. Yeah. Uh, still, you know, there is a point of attention. And I think our job is about, you know, managing contradictory injunctions, if it's uh, the proper way to say it in English. Uh, uh, what I mean is, uh, as an airline, you know, we work for ensuring that uh, airline loyalty program, ensuring that we support the business, which is to say the airline industry. Yeah. But we can't do it without also taking into consideration the social responsibility about yeah, that. For sure. We talk a lot about fuel, but yeah. there is also a point about data and the usage of data. That's right. Uh, the second point I would say is about, you know, um, 20 million of customers, 20 million of individual stories, and how do you ensure to deliver a personalized experience, but at the same time, pay attention to data privacy? So, you know, you always have this kind of balance between two things, or last but not least, you know, how do you ensure that you're telling a story which is specific enough not to be average, but at the same time that the specificity of the content that you are producing is talking to all with a limited budget. So that's actually what uh, the challenges that we have on a daily uh, basis. Not easy every day, but um, yeah. Great. And Paolo, you just won a Grand Prix for a piece of work that I think... We have, yes. Congratulations, Jim. Yes, it was that wonderful. Just, um, yes. I think, really contributes to society in a meaningful way. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the, the work is a beautiful work. And, and I think it has to do with what Jackie was talking about, Hiroson's vision about B to B to C to S, I'm sorry, to society, which is the good towards society, the impact that, you know, creativity when used with purpose, right? Uh, I know we're going to talk about purpose in a bit, but... This is a piece of work that essentially helps patients of Parkinson to get better, uh, to control some of the symptoms that they have. And it's a way through an app uh, that you can navigate through social media through your facial expressions, right? So we developed from scratch. Uh, we brought a pharma client with us. No medication whatsoever was sold in this campaign. It was just a, you know, an effort to help patients to make sure that creativity is used with purpose for the good. Um, and that was, you know, pretty much celebrated uh, within the, you know, the, the industry and yesterday was the great recognition. But beyond the recognition, I think it's important for us to keep striving and aiming for this type of projects, yeah. this type of, yeah. you know, impacts that we have. And I would say that every brand holds a, a code of ethics yeah. that we need to make sure that we address as we think about campaigns. The same way that when we see a brief, I'm going to go fast, but the no, same no, way that we see a brief, that we have an audience, we have a timeline, we have a key message, what is the code of ethics that we need to communicate and how we land that? That's part of the thought leadership, is the duty of a brand, because right now, because of the reach that brands they have, we can be bigger than politicians, we can be bigger than governments to influence people. And if we do our jobs well, our creativity is organic and has a better impact. Love your passion. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the Brazilian passion. He was going passion. there. He was going there. Um, All right. I'm going to stay with this, this topic um, and move on to another question around purpose because it's kind of related. Um, I think last year uh, in the Palais, we heard a lot about brands with purpose. 
Um, and since then, we've heard a lot about woke washing as well. And I wanted to understand from you guys, you know, um, where you stood on doing work that had a meaningful contribution, you know, and do you think about that in, in all of your efforts? Is it central to what you do? Are you constantly thinking about the role that your brands play in society? Um, uh, or have we, have we moved on from purpose being, you know, paramount? I, I think that I mean, purpose washing would be, it, it, it comes across as, let's say, a last minute, rather superficial thought to, uh, to almost uh, check the box. Uh, I, I think if you start from um, a, a company or a brand purpose, then mm -hmm. it's always at the core of the brief yeah. and at the core of the business or brand challenge. Um, and, and, and just as an example, um, Heineken has always been with a with a light tone of voice in a witty way been uh, challenging stereotypes so uh, last year we launched a, a champions league campaign uh, celebrating female football fans That's because uh, in many uh, cases brands but also yeah the whole sports industry thinks that it's a male uh, dominated uh, thing so the the campaign was called Cheers to All Fans, Men Included. <laughs> uh, and I think uh, yeah. then it, uh, it, you, can, you can do that all the way to shop floor activation. You can do that all the way uh, to uh, what you do in events and, and content and media. Uh, we had some underlying act activities, so to say, also uh, worked together uh, with Dentsu and, uh, uh, and, for instance, Google on creating what we call fresher stats. So uh, a dedicated page that instead of asking Google uh, who scored the most goals in, uh, in the Champions League, then people think it's uh, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, but it actually it's a female a football player who scored more. Right. So we also have like this cheeky way of educating people, yeah. not be judgmental, not to say you're doing yeah. something wrong, but more in a light-hearted way, challenge those stereotypes and those biases. Yeah. And I think... If you do it in in the right balance, then you then it's not uh, woke washing, but yeah. it's more uh, helping um, society pr to progress. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. It's definitely got to have that authenticity and that substance for sure. Miss Magali, anything um, you want to add? No, I think I, I cannot agree more. I think when it comes to traveling, I think that's part of it. I mean, uh, traveling is about changing perspective. Yeah. It's about learning from others. And I think we all have in mind, by the way, we are super happy, lucky to be here. We went through we uh, are two or three terrible years. I'm uh, referring to the COVID years yeah. where we were all stuck at home. And now we have the opportunity to travel again from a responsible perspective, but yeah. the ability to connect with others, you know, to build bridges, to, con you know, to learn from each other. That's the beauty of human beings. So uh, this is absolutely not you know, purpose washing. It's uh, the core of the value proposition of uh, an airline loyalty program such as Flying Blue. Yeah. So. Paolo, do you want to talk a little bit about um, how contributing to society in the work that you do? You gave an example just now, but it's a core part of um, your strategy. Right. I think it, it, it starts with the brand positioning as we, as we work together with our clients, with our brands. And, and the question that we need to ask is, why, why do we exist? What is the purpose? What is it there for me as a brand and what is it there for the audience, for my consumers? This is the main question. It's a reason to exist. Within this question, you start you know, drafting from a strategy standpoint the purpose. And as long as you keep within the positioning, you're doing a good job. You can evolve the position as you all know, but we need to make sure that you know, the strategy and the position, the strategy positioning and the purpose, they stay the, they stay the same. I think that we do not, and I'm going to just say candidly, I don't think that we have space for advertising with no purpose anymore. It's just reality. I mean, yeah, consumers, they're so jaded. They're so cynical. Everything that is very eddy, they will not pay attention. So you need to be relevant. There are ways for you to be relevant. Patsy was talking about that. You have to entertain. You have to organically integrate. But if you come up and show up, authentic with the right positioning and the purpose you will get people to pay attention to you right so i think that the impact 
it goes from a good impact from a challenging. Ooh. Whoa. Okay, we're good. <laughs> it's not all, uh, only brand safety, it's also panels. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I think that it goes not only f towards something good to society, but also something that is a challenge to society. Because as a brand, we need to have a range of emotions and a range of ways to you know, pick the society and, and poke them. I think it's, a, it's part of the, the challenging society. It's a concept that I love on advertising because it, use, it uses creativity to the max. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it's here to stay. Um, so a panel in Cannes this year wouldn't be a panel without talking about AI. So we're going to go there. Um, I would love to understand your perspectives on whether you think AI, generative AI, can replace creatives and creative agencies. Do you think we are going to be redundant in a few years' time? Um, and if you are using generative AI, I'd love to hear how you're using it as well. Um, Rob, I'll start with you again, if that's okay. Yeah, um, first of all, I don't think that agencies will cease to exist because a week like this is too good to, uh, to stop. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's uh, let no. All jokes amen, aside, amen. No, I, I think it, it will be more the way um, you apply the tools uh, that, uh, and the technological solutions that are available. So I can definitely see creative prompt engineers be part uh, yes. of, uh, uh, of agencies, be it yeah. on the creative or on the media, on the production side. But I also definitely believe that technological interventions to improve a service for instance, in, in, in my line of work, um, a recommendation to w what is the, the best bar around. I, uh, I want Brilliant. to have a drink with Brilliant. friends on Tuesday evening. They are scattered around the city. Where to go to? And generative AI is not only uh, visuals or copy, but it can also um, yeah, uh, see certain patterns in data sources and come up with a very practical solution that is... That is not it doesn't come across like rocket science or very futuristic in the in the eyes of the consumer, but is really adding value uh, in their everyday life. In this case, if they want to go out with friends, uh, because that that is a super cumbersome task to find the place, the moment, what to do, who will attend. Before you know it, it creates so much anxiety. You think, okay, I'll let it go and I'll watch my telephone again. For us, it's it's key to get that quality socializing uh, moment there and I think uh, AI can help to make it a bit easier and, 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 and maybe even more fun. It's a great example. It's creative problem solving rather than necessarily writing the creative content, but it's a, a great example. I love that one. Miss Magali? Yeah, uh, I agree with you. I think it's just another tool to be fully transparent. A powerful tool, but it's a tool among others. And uh, to get back to your question about agency, uh, I think the agency which uh, might disappear is the ones not using it effectively. So it's really a matter about how you use it. Yeah. And um, on that matter, I think, uh, you know, we hear a lot about AI. We are starting to use it too, you know, to make requests, to know, learn, know more about, you know, customer insight, what our customers are doing, to be quicker in, uh, you know, um, answering questions to the database, these kind of things. But at the same time, I think there is something super key that AI has not done yet is the essence of the agency, which is a creativity part. And I don't know how AI can answer to a customer briefing. Because when we do a briefing, for example, the truth is not in what we write. The truth is in between the lines. It's a conversation that we have. So I don't know how it would work. And on that matter, I saw yesterday, I think, one of the most amazing campaign. Cecile, you're going to kill me because you came with uh, this idea a few months ago. <laughs> but uh, the new kind of campaign about um, how don't give up on reality or something like that, yeah. which is absolutely, I don't know if you have seen it, if, uh, but just check it out. I think it's super. Who was it for? Who was it for, Michael? Nikon. Oh, Nikon. right, got your camera. The, yeah, the, the, the camera cameras. company, yeah, yeah, you know, lovely. where you've got a beautiful picture and there's yeah, something lovely. like prompt and a small sentence and then you've got a real picture of a landscape. Nice. And I think that says it all, you know, all the focus on AI, but That's at the great. end, yeah. don't forget reality, don't forget what's going on, don't, don't forget about the beauty of ordinary moments that we always take for granted. So I think it counterbalances quite nicely and... Uh, 
worthwhile uh, having a look. So check it out. <laughs> Not working for Nikon at all, huh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it actually tees up Paolo perfectly because I wondered if you wanted to talk about the craft of what we do um, versus, you know, the, the machine. Right. I, I believe strongly that it's not the source, it's the tool. The source, I think that it will always be part of this. And for now, at least, I think that the human component is <laughs> extremely important. It's so weird to talk about those things, right? To think that you know, we can be replaced. But I, I still believe that there's a amplification that AI can give. There's a, a breath that AI can, can help us speed agility, yeah. complementing, problem solving, as you mentioned. Um, but again, I position in my head, maybe it's for my peace of mind, uh, that is a, it's a tool, a very effective tool, not necessarily a source that lives alone and isolated. It needs to be integrated. And if we integrate it well, I think that we're in a good path. I'm an optimistic, so I'm going to keep on thinking on that, <laughs> about that. And like that, yes. I'm really curious. I have to say, I went to a great AI talk yesterday, and I the the, the stats that Pat's unearthed were around: can they really emulate human feeling? Because that's what great work in our industry does. It really connects yeah. and drives feeling. And I just think art and creativity is usually born out of the human condition, out of angst, depression, and yes. love, and hate. And I'm curious to see how close we can get to that through the machine. So a lot we can learn from the, the festival this year. We've got a few minutes left. I wondered if anyone wanted to ask any questions of the panel. Um, if anyone has, please throw up their hands. No, 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 no. Okay, I think we're... There's one question I might ask, just for my own interest, if that's all right. I'm going free, so I've gone totally rogue. Where's Caroline? I'm confessing. Go ahead. I would love to um, know what you've seen this year. Um, the Nikon work is an example. Any work that you've seen that you think we should all check out, what's caught your imagination this year? Go. Please, Rob, go for it. I, I need some thinking time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> uh, at least on my side, I was gobsacked by the, by the Nikon ad. Honestly. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, I'm going to uh, go check it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. I think that stays on top of my mind. You know, it's just uh, two things. Is, uh, uh, first, I think it's brilliant work, brilliant creative. Is it print? Was it print? Uh, I saw the print version, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's straightforward, and it also shows the beauty of simple copy. You don't need to say much to be impactful. And it's also, you know, something about, um, I like the fact that it creates, at least from my own perspective, frustration. You know, it's just like, uh, we should have gone for it. And uh, you were right. And uh, we've got a few things coming up. But uh, I think it's nice also sometimes to say, we could have done it. Yeah. So we should, you should talk about the Intel work. I think that is yeah. awesome work. I was gonna. I was gonna mention three, including the Intel. There's yeah. one that is a sound of cancer that is beautiful. They were able to record the sound of a cancer, cancer cell when it dies. Wow. And it, it was put, you know, to uh, patients to listen to that. It was so beautiful. The second work, I will not remember the name because last night I was very excited about the Grand Prix and I didn't pay attention too to much it. Too much rosé. Too much, yes. No, no, it was at the Palais, before the rosé, yes. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a series of photographs showing people their last picture, their last video, before they committed suicide. Wowzers, this is heavy. Did you not see anything leger? No, no, I know. It's a, no, a <laughs> I have a live version later. I know, I know. <laughs> Sorry. But it's so impactful. It's so beautiful because, you know, reality plays a big role there. So it's a wake-up call. And then, obviously, very proud of the team with the Intel work, the certified human. We have the video here. Do we have time to play? It's really like 30 seconds. Asha? Where is Asha? Oh, All right. wowzers. That was nice. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right. Cool. Nice. nice. Congratulations okay. to you. Okay. So Rob's also got a piece of work he's going to share with you, and then we are going to close out. So Rob, All right. over to you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm typ typically not modest because I will mention a Heineken example. I think <laughs> one uh, one example that uh, that I think the, the was made by uh, our team in Brazil, uh, a, a, a campaign about gaming. And for us, uh, I, I, I talked before about Heineken is all about quality socializing. So it's connecting with people beyond barriers. It's discovery. Um, and, and gaming is a very big thing uh, in Gen Z, Gen Y. That's right. But it might also sometimes prevent quality socializing if you think of it in a traditional way. And what I think the, the team there, together with the creative agency, did uh, very well is almost highlighting that connection during gaming and and, uh, and it, it's a campaign called not all nights out are out <laughs> where you see a group of friends uh, connecting uh, in in the virtual world while you you see them go and you think you'll they'll go to a bar to meet up and in the end they will meet up in the virtual world gaming and then they cheers together um, on the camera so to say Lovely. so I really like the fact that yeah, there's new ways of connecting, new ways of quality socializing, and I think we as a brand try to tap in that, and, uh, and they've done it in a brilliant way. It's lovely. We'll look it up. So that just leaves me to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank Merci. you to Miss Magali. Merci beaucoup. Merci. And thank you to Rob and to Paolo. Have a wonderful can, everyone. Thank you.